What is up YouTube, James Beck here and welcome back to another episode of the Ultra Test. Today we're going to be using a new team with a new duo. We're going to be using Zernu Nala this time as our restricted duo. A pretty pretty popular duo in the Sun and Moon series and pretty dominant as well. In fact, it won both international championships. And yeah, let's get into the team. So we got Mega Kangaskhan here, which I think is really good on Zernu Nala teams for multiple reasons. The reason why I think Kangaskhan's really good is because one of the problems in the mirror was you didn't have exactly a good switch in to the Moon Guys, Z Moon Guys team other than maybe like Smeargle or Incineroar, but even then like you don't outspeed or threaten the Lunala afterward with offense. So I think Kangaskhan's really good here because you have a way that can switch into Lunala since it's a ghost immunity. Plus the fact that you have Crunch to threaten it. Scrappy Fake Out's awesome against Lunala as well. And Low Kick is really nice for Stack Attack. Apparently like Low Kick. Every Low Kick I've used with Kane Scott actually has knocked out every single Stack Attack whenever I tested with this team. And I don't think that should be the case. But I'll look up the calc later because I don't, I want to actually know that. But uh, low kick is knocked out every stack attack, and I'm surprised. I know it's four times effective, but Mega King is gone. 125 attack stat. Renta bomb was nerfed, and the fact that stack attack has like what 230 defense. Two, 211. Okay, 211. <laughs> it's something absurd. It's just crazy to me. So we're gonna be using support Mega King is gone. We're gonna be using Z Lunala with Tailwind. I might change Tailwind to Wide Guard because I felt like all the games I played, I originally had Wide Guard on the team. I swapped it for Tailwind. Uh, a few battles ago and really hasn't done much work for me so i'm actually thinking of going back to wide guard we got trigger and stack attack with goggles we got focus ash smear goal no fake out crafty shield's pretty nice i think overall uh but i might switch it to fake out just because like i mean i have one games i'll crafty shield but i'm not exactly too sure uh if i want to keep that we have geomancy xerneas a bulky one that can take on you know live a few hits from primal groudon and standard support in Cinora. let's get started i have listened to suggestions by using the dark layout since it's easier on the eyes i'm not exactly the biggest fan of this layout other than maybe the battle background just because like i'm not a huge fan of like having these on the sides and i feel like the screen's a bit too small but just gonna be listening to the viewers' suggestions here. We got Dual Primal with Mega Gengar and Sableye and a Braviary too, which is already uh, looking to be an interesting battle. So, what do I exactly wanna go here? I like, Lunala does really well against this team other than a Braviary. If I can handle the Braviary, I'm in a pretty good spot. Sableye plus Gengar is scary because it could be like a Gravity Hypnosis, but then again, there is a Tapu Fini. Just not exactly too sure of what the combination is supposed to be. I definitely like Kangaskhan here with Lunala. As long as it's not Trick Room Gengar, it should be fine. Have Xerneas in the back. And the question is, do I want Smeargle or do I want Incineroar? Incineroar provides Intimidate, which is nice against a Groudon. Fake Out support is always nice, but there are Ghost types. Hmm. Smeargle provides Wide Guard and Follow Me, which is really good. I think Feeny would be coming in this... I'll just go in Cinnabar. It's just a good safety pick overall, I think, against my opponent. But uh, we're going to see the Gengar Sableye? Yeah, okay. Um, Not too bad here. Since I could just fake out the Gengar slot immediately and get up a Tailwind. Sableye can only like either break my Shadow Shield with Lunala. Maybe if it has will can burn my Kang, but I kind of doubt it. I'm just going to Tailwind here. I think it is the safest play as we're gonna see the protect which is fine here didn't make about because i want to preserve the scrappy and taunt coming out okay good play for my opponent but like now what now what are you gonna do i think i definitely want to save the lunala here so i'm actually just gonna go hard instant because if it is gravity hypnosis crunch might just knock out the gengar depending on its eevee spread so if we can get a crunch knockout on gengar that'd be amazing here as i think gravity hypnosis yeah Surprised it is with Afini, but all right, we do get rid of the Gengar, which is fantastic. But even though I have Incineroar asleep, Lunala is still kicking, and that's really good for me. So, Groudon comes in. All I need is a bit of chip on Groudon to put in range of my Lunala Z move. And that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to go straight for the double edge, and I'm definitely going to sack my uh, Incineroar here. So, because I don't even have a switch in. 
in a U-turn. It's Tom going to come out from the save line. I don't know what you're trying to do. Get a crit double edge, which is actually really good against my opponent's uh, Groudon, as we see a substitute. Okay. Uh, Incineroar staying asleep. Hmm. Moonblast not got the Groudon at that range? I'm not sure. That crit might actually be really handy here. Um... I'm thinking we sack Xerneas though. Like, here's the thing. I'm trying to preserve the end game to where. Like, here's the thing. If I sack both these Pokemon to a Quash into Precipice Blades, I'm in a bad spot against the Groudon, I think. Because I don't know Xerneas will knock out the Groudon. So I think I'm actually just going to sack Xerneas here and go straight for the. I think the U turn is fine in a Groudon. We'll see what my opponent decides to do, but it's going to be Quash, yep. Precipice Blades, yep. There is actually Surprise, which kind of is okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay, because I can get in Kang, I guess. Not too bad. And now I have Fake Out Pressure against the Groudon, and I can go for a Moonblast and a Sableye, knock it out, get rid of that Quash Pressure, unless that's Focus Sash. And if it has Focus Sash, that's going to be a little bit of an issue, I guess. Oh, what? <laughs> I DC. Okay. Uh, what the? Okay. Getting Kang. Moonblast. Because you're going to taunt and probably protect here. That's what I would do if I was my opponent. Yep. Should be a taunt in the Xerneas. Yep. Which is fine, because I am going to be able to get Moonblast off. This sash though, ugh. And I can't protect either. That's kind of bad because you can just quash my Kang. Did I gleam here? Should I go for a Moonblast? Hope that Moonblast can KO because that looks like bulky Groudon. Oh, I should have doubled up to Sableye, I guess, but I didn't want you to. I didn't want to risk just a hard press of Splates there and a quash immediately. Um, Should I just gleam here? Either Gleam or go for the Moonblast roll. I feel like I should Gleam, always. And I think I'm going to double edge the Groudon. Because I just don't think Moonblast would have been enough. Yeah, Moonblast definitely wouldn't have been enough into the Groudon. So I'll take that trade. Uh, hits all the Precipice Blades, which is fine. I don't know if we can beat the Kyogre in the back. Oh, it's Feeny in the back. If it's Feeny, we win. Why wasn't it Kyogre? I guess maybe my opponent didn't want to deal with the Smeargle. Uh, that works out, I think, because I just get to Z, Moonguys Beam in the Groudon. I should knock it out to protect, and Feeny shouldn't have an offensive move that can knock out Lunala, because they don't really run those. So, yeah, just am, am able to knock out. Icy Moon will probably come out. Yep. Misses, but I don't think it matters. I don't think you have a way that can touch my uh, Lunala in the first place. We're going to Moonguys Beam as my opponent does forfeit. And, yeah. I'm actually really surprised. <laughs> we got really lucky with the end game because if it was Kyogre, I guess uh could have been very problematic. But I guess maybe my opponent was really worried about the smear going the lovely kiss situation. So makes sense. Uh let's look at back at this game because there was definitely uh, one turn that I think could have changed it immediately for me. And I mean I do kind of get this read right, but there was a taunt instead. I guess maybe I should just moon guy beam the uh, Sableye, but I could wasn't sure if it carried Taunt on the Sableye, but probably should assume that from now on. So we go in Incin, because I need Lunala. Lunala's more important than Incin. Uh, but this Crunch, even though I did get rid of the Gengar, I mean, I had to prevent Hypnosis somehow later in the game. Uh, Groudon got a free switch in, and I go for a double edge here, because I need to chip away the Groudon to put in range of like Moon Guy Speed for my Lunala. I get a lucky crit, which is really good for me. A Sword Sense will come out from the Groudon. And I think the Xerneas was always my play here. Like, I'm really happy with the Xerneas play of how it worked. Quash goes out, Precipice Blades. Xerneas survived, which I wasn't really anticipating. But that tells me it's a really bulky Groudon. So, this is the play I messed up by going for Fake Out here. I should have doubled up to Sableye. Because um, I think Groudon was forced to protect here. Because if I just, let's say, um, Fake Out here, Geomancy, or even if, like, Fake Out Gleam, or even if I just double edge, my opponent was in a bad spot. Like, my opponent probably knew I was just going to Fake Out and either Geomancy or just attack with Xerneas, but knew, like, this covered every play because, uh, as long as I don't get Geo up and your save life survives, you're just able to watch the King's Gun next turn and press his place, which is what my opponent did. 
I think overall what I should have done was just double up the Sableye with Crunch plus Gleam because I think that would have probably just secured the game because I would have been able to go for like a double edge into the Groudon slot. Unless my opponent got a double protect. If my opponent got a double protect, things got a bit dicey, but I probably just am able to Geomancy. No, I can't Geomancy because my opponent would taunt it. Huh. I guess it would have came down to a double protect if that was the case. Because he would have to protect ground and you would have to be you would be forced to go for Icy Wind in that position. And yeah, I could double up the Feeny. Uh, doubling up the Feeny might not be bad, but I just don't know if that would KO. Uh but these are all theoretical, of course. I Moonblast, Sash is revealed here, and now I'm in the awkward spot, but I have to sack both my Pokemon here. But I am gonna be able to take it down the save light because I can't afford it having foul play. And also the quash factor is really big here, so I have to get rid of it. So we'll go Lunala, and luckily the last one's Feeny. If it was Kyogre, it could have been a different story. But yeah, like I just have a 100% win con of just attacking the Groudon, because the Z-move will knock out to protect at like 15%. Yeah, like no way that Groudon's living the Z. Through protect at this range, I'm going to be able to knock out the Groudon, and then Feeny shouldn't be able to 1v1 Lunala, unless it has like Calm Mind or uh, Calm Mind Moonblast or some kind of attack moves. Usually Icy Wind and Nature's Madness are the only attack moves that Feeny really runs in this format. So we got a bit lucky with the end there. It was Kyogre, I 100% lost the game, I think, because you'd just be able to click. Um, actually, no. If it was Kyogre in the back, I would have to have gone for a bunch of Bladesmiths. But otherwise, yeah. I mean, theoretically, you could win, but it wouldn't have been extremely un unlikely I'd be able to win. Okay, fix the background because uh, I don't know why I DC. That's like the first time I actually ever DC on Showdown from in this room. Uh, we got the standard X ray team. Okay, so we got X ray, Thernius Requaz, and Sinor Atlantis Varian, Amoongus Feeny. The sets always vary on these teams, so I'm not exactly too sure of what I want to go here. I kind of want to go. But now it's really good against these teams. It just really depends. I got to watch out for the Rayquaza because Rayquaza can be scary. Uh, the Feeny is also really scary here. I think having Stack Attack is really good because I do have Goggles and Gyro Ball is going to nuke that uh, Xerneas. So that's something that's really good here. The question is, what combination of Pokemon do I want to bring? I don't really like Smeargle here, if I'm being realistic, because I don't think it's that good against my opponent's team. But I think I'm going to go Xerneas... I kind of want to bait like uh, my opponent getting Geomancy up and then just bring in the Sack Attacker. So I think I'm going to go Xerneas here with mm, maybe Xerneas Lunala covers the... Nah, I don't think it's that's good. Bringing Incineroar. I think I'm no not bringing Kang because Kang's not really that good against my opponent other than chipping. But I think I'm going to bring Xerneas Incin. I want to bring stack attack and I'm pretty sure Lunala will be the back Pokemon because I want Lunala to hit the Amoongus. It's also a great way that I can survive a hit. We're going to see Feeny plus Incin, which is fine here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I can Geo. Not really that good because there's a Haze on potential Feeny. Mm. I kind of just want a Moonblast because I kind of need to chip it away at these Pokemon. Uh, I need to chip away the instant so I put in rock slide range and I need to chip away the Feeny. So maybe just go for Gleam here and a hard U-turn into instant because I'm pretty sure either Haze is coming out like fake out into maybe would fake out here my Xerneas and just go for the Icy Wind immediately which is fine. I just want some chip damage against my opponent. I don't know what my opponent brought in the back though. I'm guessing Landorus and Xerneas because you have no way to deal with my stack attack without Landorus unless the Rayquaza carries like um waterfall earth power what else does it get i know it gets fighting moves too but no one runs fighting moves on the Rayquaza. so we'll get a gleam here no fake out maybe a haze no just madness which is a good play and u-turn coming out which is fine uh show me something that does not appreciate uh sakateka like the xerneas for instance definitely would appreciate that <laughs> nice okay so not a bad turn as we will be able to U-turn out, get in our stack attacker here. That Gleam did a lot to the uh, Feeny. What should that Gleam do? That did a lot. It's probably just Geomancy and... Uh, I get Geomancy plus... Hmm, I don't want a Geomancy. 
I don't want to just gleam again. Gleam will put you. Did gleam put, does gleam put him? In, gleam puts him in berry range. What the heck is that, Feeny? I need chip anyway. How much did I do to instant? Twenty-five. Oh, I'm worried about nature's madness stuff. I'm gonna gleam in Jara Ball, I think. Be Xerneas, cause I don't, I can't let Xerneas set up. Even if Vincent comes in, that's fine. Like, uh, wait, why did Gleam do so less now? Twenty-three. Oh, I crit the Feeny. That's no wonder the damage was like so awkward. Okay, that's fine. I think I can Geomancy here now because my opponent's not expecting the Geomancy and I'm definitely going to go instant. I need to save stack attack and I need it not intimidated so I can actually deal with my opponent's back two Pokemon. I don't know whether that's a Quaza here. Maybe it's like Nature's Madness Flare Blitz into Xerneas, but that'd be fine. That'd actually be perfect because I'm pretty sure I would survive the combination and I'd be able to glean the following turn to knock out both my opponent's Pokemon, so I'd gladly welcome that spot. is going to come out, which is good play, and you turn. Okay. But I'm in a really good position because Gleam is going to be able to knock out the Feeny at this range. And if Amoongus comes in, Flare Blitz in a Gleam is perfect. And Xerneas coming in? That's fine. Um, yeah, I just get to Gleam here. The question is, does Xerneas set up? I don't think you can set up because if I Moonblast, you're in a really bad spot. Um, I want to play that covers both. I think stack attack are hard here, but I'm just worried if you Geo. I'm just gonna go stack attack anyway. Instant's gonna come out, which is fine. I don't know if he protects or not, or no. Okay, you do protect, which is perfect actually, because now I'm able to get a position where I can either Gleam, like I Gleam here and I go for a Gyro Ball because you can't knock out my Xerneas with a Fake Out combination into Moonblast because I'm plus two and you're not boosted. If you do boost, you get knocked out by Gyro Ball. And something's getting KO'd here, so I do not mind this play. Even if, like, yeah, see? As I'm able to get Gyro Ball off into Xerneas, pick up that knockout. Beautiful. Get that defense beast boost. And uh, show me your Pokemon. Show me what's getting KO'd. Landorus, yep. Okay. As anticipated. At this point, I think Lunala does win the game here. Uh, Sakataka might be worth saving because I think it could sweep an endgame. I'm just going to go for a Gleam here. Oh, if you earthquake yourself, you get knocked out 100%. I could protect go instant, but that's just like a tectonic rage into the protect, and I don't think that's good. I think I'm just going to go instant here. As Feeny's going to come out, which is no surprise, we will go out into our instant here. As we're going to see Gleam. Yeah, the lander survives because I don't have much bulk. Earthquake going to come out, which is fine, and pretty much should win this game now. I get to go Lunala and Z into the landers, and that should be 100% win con. So we'll go for the Z move into the lander slot and we'll just hard U turn into the instant. Yeah, because you can try to protect. I doesn't matter to me. I get a knock on to the lander slot guaranteed. I get to U turn out into my stack attacker and just do damage. We're going to see the snarl, which is fine here. But yeah, my opponent realizes that I just U turn into instant. I switch into instant afterward for one of my Pokemon. And my opponent can't really beat the offensive presence that I have. So I'm really proud of how this game worked because I felt like I positioned myself really well. I assumed what my opponent would have had in the back because based on the lead, because let's see what my opponent brought. My opponent led Insin plus Feeny, right? So I have to play to assume the back to Pokemon. You usually bring Xerneas against me uh, in this case because of the fact that these two don't really have any offensive presence on the field. You, It's mainly support. Feeny will lead for support. And Insit is more like a U-turn slash Intimidate Mon. Uh, especially which helps against my stack attack. So I had to assume Xerneas would be in the back. And then the last Pokemon, I assume it had to be Landis. Because if it wasn't Landis, you had to have either like some kind of tech move like Low Kick or a Water type attack into Feeny in order to knock out my stack attack. And, tech, and these builds tend to not run that. So... All I need is chip. Like, I'm trying to get a stack attack a win game. If I can geo, that's perfect late game. But right now, I don't need to geomancy in front of a potential haze, a potential roar, a bunch of other things that could affect this game. Although, I don't think this instant would carry roar based on the team composition because he probably needed dark move. So, no fake out comes out, a gleam. The critical hit kind of threw me off because I was like, what is that damage in a Feeny? Um, <laughs> so, 
yeah we see a u-turn like going u-turn makes a lot of sense here i think for me because a stack attack it was just a good play overall never let Zernia set up i'm just gonna be able to get more chip get some gleam get some gyro ball pressure uh, which is really good nature's madness comes down to stack attack which is fine maybe i don't let saga take taka take too much damage but i'd rather stack attack take a bit more damage than Zernia's getting a boost here immediately so gyro ball comes out which is fine i chip the instant i get to go my own instant and geomancy here because i don't think you're gonna haze this turn if you are, if you see me click gleam twice i don't think you're gonna assume that as heal pulse comes out from my opponent in a u-turn and now i'm in a super favorable position because the feeny does get knocked out by plus two gleam which is the position i wanted and even if he hazed here it wasn't like the end of the world for me right I don't think it would have been the end of the world. I could have clicked Gleam afterward. I could have clicked Fake Out. There were a few things that I could have done. I could have even clicked Moonblast if I really want to into the Feeny slot. That might have been able to pick up the Knockout because I think Gleam did like 20. No, it did 23 to 27. It was like a 40. Ah, Moonblast would have been close actually. But yeah. Now I'm in a perfect position where I can just Gleam here and threaten the Feeny and get stack attack in which is a pretty good position because you can't afford me to moon blast your Xerneas. Xerneas is one of your only offensive presence against my team so i think a gleam here just not risking potential haze i thought my opponent might have wanted stacked feeny to get instant in for free but this ends up working i think even better for me because now your instant is threatened by gleam i get to go for a uh, moon blast into gyro ball combination or i might have clicked gleam here depending on the situation I don't remember what I clicked, but I clicked one of those because I wanted to deny the Xerneas from setting up. As I knew my opponent couldn't knock me out with my, uh, my opponent's Xerneas with a fake out combination. And yeah, I think I clicked Gleam actually. Uh, Landers reveals itself here. All I have to do is get gl click Gleam and get a knockout and then I just go instant here. So I don't lose my stack attacker because stack attacker can be a win con on the Earthquake. And that was completely fine because I get Lunala in and I got the necessary chip damage onto Landis where Zemu can knock it out through Protect and that's basically what I was aiming for. Because whether it was in Sinor that was getting knocked out or Beanie that was getting knocked out by the Gleam, whichever one it decided to, I got the necessary damage on Landis and one of these Pokemon was not soloing the rest of the game. So yeah, really happy about how that played out. I think overall we had a pretty solid game plan, I think. And I think we were able to execute it really well as well as condition our opponent not to uh, haze on that one turn. But I'm not sure if I write Geo all the time. I felt like my opponent wouldn't have gone for it. I thought maybe, I thought it would be another Nature's Madness. Potentially, maybe in a stack attack I'd have put myself in the plus two Gleam range uh, for my opponent's earnings, which I could have seen, or try to put me in like a U-turn Moonblast range, which is definitely what I was expecting. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not bad not bad we'll do one more i guess but this team doing really well and that's really good because uh earlier when i was playing with this team wasn't doing so hot but now i think i'm getting used to the team once again actually this was one of the first few teams that i built for ultra series and i think it's a really solid one i think the only pokemon that hasn't done work is our smeargle which is probably a good thing oh i think we lose to this don't we no we have moon guy speed which ignores the uh Shedinja one to guard because it's a silk strategy it looks like um that's a silk strategy lunala is a real pain though lunala is a real pain hmm. okay um lunala is a pain i mean not lunala xerneas I think I'll go Kang, Xerneas, have Instant in the back, or do I want Smeargle? Nah, I don't want Smeargle. Smeargle's not bad, but I think I need Intimidate against this team. And we definitely need Lunala. Like, Lun saving Lunala is going to be so important. I have to basically sweep my opponent's team with Xerneas. <laughs> I really don't know what combination of Pokemon my opponent's going to pick. You could bring the Tapu Fini, plus the Shedinja, plus the Ditto. But Groudon and Yveltal are also really good against my team. You might decide not to bring Yveltal, but like, I guess the Lunala, which is probably my biggest threat to the uh, Shedinja, it might be your best play. Shedinja's gonna leave with Tapu Fini immediately. Um, oh, we also confirmed it's Scarf on the uh, Fini. Doesn't it go down to Fake Out plus Geo? Hmm. 
Um, could be red card ditto, I guess. I don't need like Geomancy to sweep though. I just need big damage, I think. Because I don't really care about the soak strategy. Moon Guy Speam ignores the ability on Shedinja, which is what I'm going to go for. So we get a fake out off. Shadow Sneak. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, are you going to ally switch? Like the two plays I see are ally switching here. And I'd rather you soak actually. The two plays are ally switching or ditto coming in. I think I'm just gonna moon blast the. I don't want to moon blast Shedinja. I want to moon blast Shedinja actually. And locate. Okay. Because if you ally switch here, I get the Feeny. If you don't, I'd rather have Feeny like staying in and not doing anything against me. Or I could Moonblast Feeny and Crunch a Dinja, and Crunch would actually get it. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, Ditto comes out perfect. Uh, that's fine. Or is it? Oh, that's good. Oh, wait, is it? <laughs> oh, it's not red card. Oh, that could have been really bad, actually. <laughs> My heart stopped. <laughs> okay, uh. We get the Ditto, which is fine. It was an ally switch. I got a gleam there, I guess, but like, oh, that could have been really bad. I was expecting like, I don't know, but now I'm in a decent spot, I guess. Cause you shouldn't be able to knock out Xerneas unless you have the Z move. I really hope you're not Z Xerneas cause we'll have issues otherwise. I'm gonna go for a double edge into, uh, I'm gonna go for double edge. You could go for like Moonblast into Kang. I'm fine with that trade. I'm guessing it's Scarf Ditto if that's the item. Uh, I win the speed tie, it looks like, so it's not Scarf Ditto. And I'm just able to knock out Feeny, and that's probably game. Unless the uh, Shedinja has Sword Stance. Uh, even if it has Sword Stance, I just crunch. And let's see your back Pokemon, because it goes down to Moonblast plus uh, Double Edge guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, that is game. So, uh... <laughs> uh let's look back at this. Um, I really want to look back at that second turn, I think, because I think that was the key one. Like, I... Against this lead, I just fake out Geo. Like, there's no reason not to fake out Geo here. It's the best play I have for me. And yeah, we do confirm it's Scarfini based on the fact that uh, Misty Terrain be went before my Fairy Aura. I'm actually really just surprised you Shadow Clawed off the bat because I think you always just soak and you uh, Shadow Claw. You soak the Shedinja because if I don't fake out, you get the soak off so you're immune. Or you. Just go for damage into my Xerneas with Shadow Claw. I don't get why he Shadow Sneak there. Uh, the next turn was not what I exactly called. Again, like there were options. So Ally Switch was definitely one of them. Ally Switch was definitely one I was considering. The other ones were Feeny Soaking. Feeny Switching out if it was Red Card Ditto. And the Ally Switch. And I thought, okay. Moonblast covers if it's an Ally Switch. And Crunch also kind of covers it. Because I don't... Like, if you soak here, right, and the Xerneas isn't red card, I'm in a bit of trouble because I feel like if that happens and my Xerneas gets blown back by the red card, I'm not exactly in a great spot against my opponent's uh, ditto. So what I want to really do is try to prevent that ditto from red carding me out. And I don't think you would make the ally switch play here and uh, go ditto unless you really expected, like, Gleam or something. And I had no reason to Gleam in that spot. So it kind of works out because uh, ally switch, so it's not a red card ditto. I do get a crunch off and I felt like I, I get the crunch off if like the Feeny decides, if that ally switch play did come in effect and the soak came out. And again, even if like my opponent didn't ally switch for instance, and there was a, just a soak and I don't know, Shadow Claw and uh, Xerneas. I had been fine with that spot because basically the Feeny's useless and I could either make it stay on the field or I could force it to switch out. And I have a bunch of those options. Like I could get in a position where I can get instant in afterward and have fake out mind game. So I think that was really good there for me. But this also works out because as long as the Xerneas doesn't win the speed tie, I should be fine. As long as it's not like a speed tie and, you, and you're and you like life orb, choice specs, or Z, Farium Z. And we have seen Farium Z on it before. It's on in Moon Series. So 
that's the reason why I made that play. Now I just get to go for Gleam. If I win the speed tie, I just win. And if not, I probably still win unless my opponent's able to actually knock out my Xerneas. Because even if you knock out Kang, I'm in a fine spot. And yeah, that was pretty much the end when I won the speed tie. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we were able to get three wins, which I'm actually really happy about because I wasn't winning with this team earlier. So I'm really glad with how the team worked. Uh, we never brought Smeargle, but that might be a blessing in disguise because all my other games I was using Smeargle, they were not pretty. But hope everyone enjoyed today's episode of the Ultra Test. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like down below. Show some support as well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description. Such as my social media, the side of my channel, and all that good stuff will be linked down below. If you want to try out the pacement of this team, it is down below. Check out my social media, my Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram accounts. And if you want to go that extra mile to support my channel, there is my Patreon page linked down below. But you can always help out my videos by just leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.